Mr. Kucinich. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. I, I thank the speaker. We've heard the economic reports. Over 10 million Americans out of work. 7.2% unemployment. Some say that unemployment could go to 10%. We could be looking at 12 million Americans out of work. The productive capacity of this nation is not being used. It's withering. We have to put America back to work. Our program actually is pretty simple. Jobs, jobs, jobs. Put people back to work with good paying jobs. How do you do that? You go back to that old time religion of FDR, reflected in the New Deal. He rebuilt America. There's over $1.6 trillion in infrastructure needs that are unmet, that can't be met by local or state governments. The stimulus package that we hear discussion about does want to do something about addressing infrastructure that's significant. We should support that. But we also have to look at our experience, and we don't want to be tarped again in this Congress. Because this Congress voted for a $350 billion bailout of banks. I didn't vote for it, but the House and, and the Senate voted for it. And it resulted in the banks using the money not to help people stay in their homes, but in using the money to buy other banks, take over other banks. They hoarded the money. There is a credit freeze. We cannot, we must take Notice of that. I know Chairman Frank is going to do, uh, Barney Frank is going to do that with the next tranche of TARP money, try to make sure money goes to keeping people in their homes. That's, that's a positive step in the right direction. But Congress must take note of its experience in the bailout when we're fashioning a so-called stimulus package because we want to make sure that the money gets the people who need it the most and it gets the people quickly. Now, some say that you can do that through tax cuts. Well, actually, with people being afraid of the economy getting worse, they're holding on to their money. Look at the Christmas retail returns. Sales are down dramatically. People don't want to spend if they have it. So how do you get the economy moving again? Tax cuts, tax carry forwards, giving businesses that made bad choices a chance to get more money so they can hold on to it? No, we have to prime the pump of the economy. And the way you prime the pump of the economy is that you create millions of jobs, putting people back to work, rebuilding our roads, our bridges, our water systems, our sewer system. That's infrastructure. But there are some broader issues here we have to look at. The banks have shown that they can't be trusted with the American economy. That's generally been the case, but now it's out in the open $350 billion later. In 1913, the money power of the country was taken away from the people by constitutional privilege it belongs with the Congress, but it was given up in the Federal Reserve Act. The Federal Reserve is no more federal than Federal Express, but yet it has the power to determine the direction of use of money in our economy. If we could take that power back and put the Federal Reserve under Treasury, we start to be in a position of being able to control monetary policy on behalf of the United States people. We also have to address the issue of the fractional reserve system, which is how banks create money out of thin air. And then as they do that, they've created the conditions where we've had this kind of Ponzi scheme collapsing. Uh, banks and the hedge funds working uh, together. So we have to halt the bank's privilege to create money by ending the fractional reserve system. Past monetized credit would be converted into U.S. government money, and banks would act as intermediaries accepting deposits and loaning them out to borrowers. Fine. But then, with the ability to control our fortunes, we then 
once we control money again, we spend the money into circulation and infrastructure. Not just the physical infrastructure, but also on health care. We not only can address housing needs, rebuilding America's infrastructure, but we can also get people to health care they need in this country. We can enable children to stay in school, to go back to school. We really have the opportunity to take control of our own destiny again. But we can't go back to the same old, same old. Trickle down economics, the trickle never gets down. The invisible hand of the marketplace is in the hands of the American, is in the pockets of the American taxpayers. The invisible hand of the marketplace in the pocket of American taxpayers. Let's rebuild America, let's reclaim our economic destiny, and let's do it as a Congress united, working with the new administration. Thank you. Under the Speaker's announced policy of January 6, 2009, if this were a dictatorship, it'd be a heck of a lot easier. <laughs> Just so long as I'm the dictator. <laughs>